Okay, thank you. I am um, a co-PI and representing the Morea Coral Reef uh, LTR. And in terms of site news, um, as we all have been dealing with, uh, the pandemic has had certain effects on our, our operations. However, we're happy to report that despite continued COVID-related travel and research restrictions during 2020 and 2021, our time series data collection was largely not affected. And, and further, we were able to maintain ongoing experiments and even uh, initiate some new experiments. So we're happy about that. During this period of time, we've prioritized facilitating the research by our early career MCR scientists, and this included graduate students, uh, postdocs, and early career associate investigators. One um, event that has been affecting our site uh, extensively for the last two years is in April of 2019, Morea was affected by a very large scale uh, marine heat wave that caused extensive coral bleaching and mortality. And this has set the stage for the MCR to investigate how impacts of different types of disturbances, which we've all experienced at, at, in Morea, including crown of thorns, sea star outbreaks, which are predators of corals, cyclones, and now coral bleaching, interact with local stressors such as nutrient pollution and fishing at our site to impact coral reef resilience. And then in uh, our last newsy note, um, we like others are also preparing our renewal proposal for, in this case, MCR4. In terms of human environment uh, interactions, reefs historically have been viewed as kind of stable equilibrium systems that are normally remote and perhaps not affected by uh, human driven uh, disturbance. However, we now know that disturbance and extreme events are central to coral reef ecological dynamics. And certainly human driven climate change is resulting in multiple challenges for coral reefs, including warming ocean temperatures, increasing ocean acidification and sea level rise. And these large scale drivers then interact with local stressors. And in our case, that tends to be increasing nutrients, eutrophication and fishing, particularly of herbivorous fishes um, that are obviously resulting from human activity. So going forward, MCR will be investigating how these in increasingly frequent extreme events, such as marine heat waves, affect reefs at all levels of biological organization, from molecules and cells to uh, ecosystems, and how legacy effects may determine or at least modify how coral reefs respond to these extreme events in the presence of local stressors. So shown here in the upper left-hand corner is a graph of thermal stress, accumulated thermal stress experienced by uh, reef corals in this case in on Morea reefs from about 2005 until 2020. And it's very obvious that event in 2019 uh, resulted in accumulated thermal stress that was nearly double of anything that these corals had seen in the last uh, 15 years. And so the four reefs of Morea prior to this bleaching event um, had very high live coral cover as indicated in the picture in the upper uh, right of this slide. And some sites had live coral cover exceeding 75%, which is relatively high for any reef uh, throughout the world. During this bleaching, uh, many of these corals uh, lost their symbiotic algae and shown in the, the other photo on the right hand side, the white colonies have lost their zooxanthellae, and now what is seen is live coral tissue that is transparent overlying the white coral skeletons. So two points to make here. One is not all of those colonies bleached, and you see some dark colonies in between the white ones that were colonies that uh, did not lose their symbiotic algae. The other point is that not all of those colonies that bleached uh, all died. Some of them were able to recover. Nevertheless, as the graph in the lower right-hand panel shows, live uh, percent cover of live coral over time as an average of the two four reef sites on the North Shore Morea, we see if we just focus on the diamonds at 10 meters, there was a 56% loss of live coral uh, at 10 meters. Now at, at 17 meters, that mortality was somewhat less. So again, one point uh, to return to is there's still some live coral present uh, on these uh, four reef communities. So spatial patterns then were created by depth dependent mortality as one can see from that graph, but in the lagoon also a synergism with increased nutrient hotspots. And so there was higher rates of bleaching and severity of bleaching for corals that were located in these nutrient hotspots. 
The outcome of this uh, coral mortality is obviously opening up a lot of substratum for other organisms to occupy. And the pic picture on the bottom in the center shows one of those organisms, which is a brown macroalga, the genus Labophora, was able to opportunistically grow out of cracks and crevices and occupy this newly available space made by coral mortality. And so there is an ongoing shift in community structure of uh, following this extreme event. And it wasn't only community structure that was affected in terms of ecosystem function, uh, there were also some changes. And while there was no change in net ecosystem primary production, there was a drastic 65% reduction in net ecosystem calcification of these reefs. So where do we go next? Well, we're interested in answering questions such as how do coral reefs respond um, to these extreme events like marine heat waves as they become more frequent and intense? And how, do, how does the interaction of these large scale disturbances with local stressors, in our cases with fishing and nutrification, affect coral reef resilience? Additionally, we're interested in knowing if material legacies, in this case, the presence of dead coral skeletons left behind by the bleaching mortality, how does this alter responses to, for coral recruitment and perhaps early coral mortality, and how might this change reef responses to future heat waves? Furthermore, what role do informational legacies, such as winnowing of bleaching susceptible genotypes, and or epigenetic changes of persisting genotypes play in the response of reefs to future heat waves? Does that perhaps mitigate um, the negative effects uh, in the future to these large disturbances? So overall, MCR will continue to leverage your time scale measurements and implement new experiments to test hypotheses about how these extreme events drive the dynamics of coral reef communities. So thank you very much.